Hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Lunchtime Live here at the Wild Center. My name is Nick and today what we're focusing on is one of our snakes that lives here at the Wild Center. Her name is Cleo and Cleo is an Eastern milk snake. And what we're doing is I'm going to showcase why sometimes common names or what we typically call animals doesn't quite fit their real description. So I'm going to flip the camera back around to see Cleo. So right now, Cleo is curled up in this log, so you can see some of the patterns that are on her body right now while she's in here. And this is kind of what a typical habitat of an eastern milk snake would look like. So they're in areas on the forest floor where there's lots of spots for them to hide and tuck in. But the name milk snake doesn't quite fit what their lifestyle is. Now they don't actually drink milk. But that is a story of how they got their name. So there was once a farmer who saw a milk snake in his barn and unfortunately killed the snake out of fear. Uh, really, you don't have to be afraid of milk snakes at all. They are harmless to humans. But the next day, he noticed that his cow was kind of acting funny and may have been sick. And so that he assumed that that milk snake was in there trying to get the milk from the cow and somehow ended up biting the cow and got the cow sick. Now really, the milk snake was not in there after milk. What it was likely doing was hunting mice and rats that love to live in barns as well. So, a little misinterpretation, but somehow the name stuck, and we still call them Eastern milk snakes to this day. Now, you can see that she has a lot of different patterns on her body. There is some browns, some whites, and they do vary quite a bit. Uh, there's actually up to 25 different subspecies of the eastern milk snake throughout the U.S. So there is lots of different ones, and a lot of that has to do with the patterns of the colors that you will see on them. I've seen some that are much more uh, reddish. I've seen some that are much darker brown, but Cleo's kind of a gray and then a, a darker grayish brown color on her body. Now she does have a bowl of water. And some might mistake that for milk, but it is not milk. That is water for her to soak in. Uh, but a lot of the water they get is actually from their diet. So milk snakes do eat lots of rodents. They are actually a member of what is considered the king snake family, meaning that they do eat other snakes as well. But they're not very big. Uh, they can get up to 24 to 36 inches long, but they're usually pretty narrow. So it has to be a pretty small snake for an eastern milk snake to uh, be able to catch and eat. Now, common names can be confusing, and as I mentioned, we do uh, use them to sometimes they don't fit the animal, but animals are given scientific names as well that are in Latin, and the Latin name of the eastern milk snake is Lampropeltis triangulum, which is a much more fitting name. So the first name is considered the group of king snakes, and the triangulum refers to a spot on their heads that is either usually Y-shaped or kind of triangular. So what their Latin name translates to is radiant shield because they are very shiny, especially when the sunlight hits them. And they have that little shield patch right on their head. Now a lot of people do confuse them for other species of snakes such as water moccasins that we don't even have in New York or other venomous snakes. Because their patterns are meant to mimic them. It's because they are such a small snake, they don't want to be eaten by others. So their patterns do look similar to other species to try to be able to protect themselves as well. So hopefully you learned some real quick facts about the eastern milk snake that you can find all throughout New York State. Next time you go out hiking, make sure you look out for snakes. They are really cool animals that do a lot for our environment. They really keep down the rodent populations. And right now in the summertime is one of the best times to see them because they'll be out sunning themselves quite often. Now if you do have any questions about snakes or milk snakes, feel free to drop them into the comments. I'll check them throughout the day and try to answer them the best I can. But I just want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Wild Center. It really means a lot for you all to be watching these lunchtime lives with us. And I hope that you can get outside and enjoy this beautiful summer weather. All right. Bye, everybody.